Hardware Hound here guys, day two of CES and I am at a suite with Alpha Cool Mod My Mods and Wu Team. And so let's talk about these keyboards guys because there's a lot going on. So if you've heard anything about Wu Team, you know that they have analog keys and that's kind of cool, right? And that sounds great. But what does that really mean? Obviously, it gives you the idea of like analog stick control from WASD for movement, and that's really useful. But unfortunately, some games kind of support that, some games don't. That's kind of a work in progress, but there's so much more to this analog keyboard that means so much for gaming that I just can't believe. So, for starters, yes, if we come in here, we can kind of just slowly press a key and it will act like an analog joystick which is pretty cool. If I hit this mode here and see that, you can kind of see there's a little bit of flicker going on this F1 key. Watch what happens as I start to press a key. See, it's actually measuring my pressure on it across the function keys. So the, the, the farther down I'm pressing the key, the more it's lighting up. And then if I press it all the way down, all the way to F12. So you can see right here how this analog effect is working. Isn't that cool? So yeah, because of these um, analog switches, so let me grab one of these guys here. So you've got your switch here, and how close do I need to get here before we can kind of see? Is that pretty good right there? Right there, all right, perfect. So we've got this you know, typical looking switch here, and when you come to the back side, it's like, okay, where'd the switch go? So this little spot in the top is actually just the light bar, which because it's so straight through to the switch, it helps not only light the switches nice and bright, but also helps avoid a lot of that bleed through that can come on the bottom. But the sensor is right here. And so what it does is it sends a laser, a little infrared laser up in the switch, bounces it sideways and bounces it back to the sensor. And the way that the switch is actually able to measure, it's not a timing, it's not a delay. It's actually measuring the light strength. And so that's it measures how strong the laser is based on how much is being refracted to know how far the key press is. I thought that was pretty cool. But Wooting's doing a little bit more here. So I'm going to come over here to this TV and I got to switch this to a mode real quick. <laughs> now, I just switched the keyboard back to the digital mode. There is something that is incredibly important, guys, for us gamers, especially competitive-wise. They've got this enable tachyon. And so this is really important, guys. You all know that keyboards and gaming mice, they have polling rate, right? You switch it to a 1,000 hertz polling rate. That means every, what, one thousandth of a second, the computer is trying to determine if there is signal coming. Well, it's kind of like wireless. You know, if you have a really awesome Wi-Fi router, but you have a really crappy wireless adapter, right? doesn't work well. Well, what enabling tachyon does is it makes sure that the keyboard's little microprocessor is also pulling the whole keyboard at one thousandth of a millisecond, thousand hertz pulling rate. When the keyboard is pulling at a thousand hertz and the USB port is pulling at a thousand hertz, that's when you have the fastest reaction. That's why a lot of mechanical keyboards, they'll have like about a 25 millisecond delay from when you press the key to when you actually get a response. But because of tachyon, you can actually get a better, better response time. We're talking like under 10 milliseconds of response time, much more faster, especially if you're playing competitive games. Now, I gotta switch this mode one more time. So what's cool is, is I'm switching the mode and it's switching in the software. Now this software saves everything to the keyboard, so it doesn't have to run in the background. But if you have it running and you press the mode, it changes it here, which is great when I'm trying to do video. So, I'm gonna scroll down. This guy right here is kind of cool. So this is in beta right now with booting, but this is really cool. You can build a macro based on a single key press and at different points. So, my macro can do a G key when I first start to press the key down. When I bottom the key out, then it'll be the U. And then when it start to raise the key back, that'll be the R. And then when I'm all the way back top or something, that could be the A. Four keystrokes in four macro actions in one keystroke. But here's the other cool thing. So right now, like this down arrow, what this means is if I barely hold the key down, I'm gonna be just constantly holding that G key down. 
Well, if you're doing like a raid in World of Warcraft or an MMO, that's probably not what you want to do, just having a, you know, that spell hasn't come back yet or whatever, you know, they say. So if you do this, like this kind of arrow, this means that if it'll only actuate the key once, even if you hold it there. So let's say you've got a macro and you get interrupted. You could just hold your macro at your own personal time and then finish it out when your character comes back into control or something. This seems like useful gaming macros. Now, guys, I'm in my 30s and I'm set in my ways and I don't use macros. So I know I'm probably never going to get around to using that, but I see the benefit there. I love this macro thing. So guys, that rooting thing is really, really awesome keyboard. I think this is a great design. Awesome job there. We got some more things to cover, so go ahead and keep an eye on my channel. We're going to have some more things right here, and we're going to talk about it.